Thank you everyone so much for joining us today for Harvard Extension School for our coffee chat, all about technology programs at Harvard Extension School. We're thrilled that you're here to join us today and we have a great session in store. My name is Jacqueline Brinkhouse and I am our coffee chat moderator for today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. A recording of this webinar will be sent to the email you use to register. The recording will also be accessible on the event webpage and on our Harvard Extension School YouTube channel. Please utilize the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions to our technology staff, students, and alumni. Our team has compiled your pre-submitted questions and we will elevate appropriate questions to our panel. Please note that we will not utilize the raised hand feature during this session. Today, we will start with Dr. Bruce Wong, our Director of Master's Degree Programs in Information Technology, reviewing the Harvard Extension School Advantage, and we will review program offerings. We will then discuss program benefits and outcomes and conclude with the live Q&A session with Bruce, an academic advisor, and three technology students and alumni. Members of our enrollment services team are also here answering your questions in the Q&A feature. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bruce Wong. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you, thank you, Jacqueline. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, uh, depending on where you are calling from. Yes, we are a global community. So thank you for joining us today to learn more about our master degree programs in technology. In the dynamic and ever evolving field of tech, right, in technology, it is critical for us to stay current and our education program offerings are here to support your ambitions. Whether you are just stepping into the tech world or seeking to elevate uh, your career, we provide an array of degrees and certificates that cater to every stage of your professional journey. Our programs are defined by their flexibility and customization allowing you to study at a pace that suits you and choose courses that directly align with your career objectives. Next. <coughs> so now let's delve into the specific of our graduate degrees. Our master's programs are meticulously crafted to arm you with the advanced technical skills and cutting edge knowledge up to date needed to tackle complex challenges and remain at the forefront of technological innovation. Our technology programs include five master's degree field of studies. At the foundation, at the cornerstone layer, we have the computer science degree program. Now the computer science degree program basically allowing you to dive deep into programming, software engineering, algorithms, and system design to prepare you for the software driven world. The typical persona for the computer science degree is a problem solver, eager to delve into coding and create innovative software solutions. With an earned computer science degree, you can take on roles such as like software developers, uh, systems architect, um, or specialist, contributing to the development of cutting edge technologies, for example, like autonomous vehicle technology, right? So professionals in computer science, basically that they are instrumental uh, in developing uh, vehicle technologies and professionals in computer science and uh, basically develop software that empower self-driving cars. And this is basically uh, a career that you will be involved in developing transformative technology that has the potentials and uh, to make this world a better place. Uh, you can improve uh, traffic's uh, efficiencies and you can enable uh, elders and uh, to uh, better their mobility uh, issues, right? So with the transformative cutting edge technology and system being created, we need to make sure that we can safeguard and protect those systems. So we have the cybersecurity degree program 
focusing on protecting data and systems from digital threats, um, an increasingly vital field uh, in our connected, uh, interconnected uh, world. Right? As long as you put your computer, you put your technologies on the internet, on the network, you are a target for cyber attacks. So graduates uh, basically from our program often find themselves uh, in high demand positions like security analyst, specialist, penetration testers, uh, security architects, chief information security officers, right? Cybersecurity professional play a critical role uh, in creating secure mobile payment systems, for example. This includes the development of encrypted transaction process, secure users uh, authentications protocols, and fraud detection systems to protect against data breaches and financial debt, allowing for safe and convenient financial transactions uh, on the go. Right, And so we said that cybersecurity experts are there to protect data and systems. Data must be a valuable asset. You might have heard people say that data is the new oil. Well, we automatically equate that to data must be valuable and expensive. However, when British mathematician Cliff Humby said that in, 20, uh, in 2006, when he said data is the new oil, he actually meant that data is like oil. It is not useful in its raw state. It needs to be refined and processed before it can be turned into critical and important assets for the business. So we have the data scientists, right? And uh, so we introduced the data science degree program enable you to harness the power of data analytics and machine learning to extract insights and drive decision making. Those who pursued uh, the data science degree programs are analytical thinkers fascinated by the story data tells. With this degree, you are looking at career like data scientists, data anal analysts, uh, machine learning engineers, or big data solution specialists, transforming raw data into strategic decisions. Just a month ago or so, um, there was news um, that talking about a lady in California, right? And uh, she was able to speak in her own voice the first time in 18 years after a stroke. And she, the first time that she can speak to her husband using her own voice in 18 years, and that was enabled by data science and AI, right? What about the presentation layer? Well, at the presentation layer, we have the degree program, Digital Media Design, which is blends the technology and creativity to innovate the realms of interactive media, game design and beyond. Right, and uh, so I, I, it is ideal for creative technologists in this field. And uh, so they merge design principles with digital skills to produce compelling media experience. Graduates, basically they, they embark on careers such as like user experience designer, digital content creator, right? And uh, virtual reality uh, develop, uh, developers. Uh, pushing the boundaries of how we interact with digital content. For example, in virtual reality, professionals in digital media design create immersive VR experiences, which are being used in various industries, ranging from gaming to education to healthcare. For example, a VR simulation for medical training allows healthcare professionals to practice complex surgical procedures in a controlled virtual environment before performing them in real life. Yes, digital media design for good. Then we have systems engineering, right? So basically that is the field that tying it all together. Systems engineering, optimizing complex systems, ensuring that they are efficient, reliable, and meet users' needs. The systems engineering graduate, basically that they have a 
big picture view, right? They are the big picture thinker who designs, integrates, and manages complex systems over their life cycles. Career pathways can include um, system analysts and quality uh, assurance engineers, uh, project managers, uh, CIO, um, uh, uh, CTO, and et cetera, right? And uh, so this is basically it integrates uh, everything together. And if you see some of the cool things that people are doing out there, like for example, managing smart grid technology with IoT and so forth. And each one of this program is a gateway to a future-proof career, ensuring that you not only uh, be ready for the challenges of today, but also the opportunities for tomorrow. Right? So what sets our tech degree programs apart is their impact-driven design. Our curriculum is challenging yet profoundly experiential. Um, it geared towards uh, delivering uh, real-world uh, relevancy and immediate applicability. And uh, so you might, for example, uh, take courses such as like advanced machine learning uh, or network security management. Um, and uh, then the next day, and you actually applying those concepts uh, at work in the workplace. Our faculty are pulled from the highest echelons of academia, uh, academia and the industry, right? Including like, for example, uh, we have uh, Dr. Henry Leiter, uh, who uh, has been in Harvard for a number of years and at the School of Engineering and teaching computer science to a number of the celebrities uh, in big corporations uh, that you found them today. You have a uh, professor, uh, tenure professor, James Micken, right? And you can learning about how to construct operating systems uh, from him. You have members like David Cass and uh, they're from the industry who is the president uh, of the largest Chief Information Security Officer uh, Associations, um, and on and on. And uh, so we have a number of uh, faculty uh, that you can tap on. And we've, with our capstone projects, you also will step beyond theory into practice and working on tangible problems uh, with peers uh, and industry uh, leaders. The flexibility we offer is unparalleled. Uh, with the majority of your coursework uh, available online. However, we also value the immersive experience, which is why we include a three-week pre-capstone course on campus. You can tailor your education experience through elective courses uh, and stackable certificate options, enabling you to build a degree that is unique uh, as your uh, career path. Uh, although the degree is designed to be complete in five years, um, many of our students and uh, basically finish in two and a half and three years. Uh, the choice is yours. Uh, we are dedicated to make educational uh, education accessible, a Harvard education accessible, offering affordable tuitions and an earn your way in admission policy uh, and open doors uh, to as many passionate learners as possible. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Katie uh, Genovese, and, uh, who is the academic advisor and uh, who will be uh, guiding you uh, in the next uh, slide. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to join everybody today. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the stackability of our programs. We have a variety of certificates in different IT topics, and most of them stack towards a related master's degree. Many of our students earn a certificate. Lots of folks earn certificates. They're a really great way to maximize your time here and maximize the credentials that you leave us with. And, you know, you can choose courses that are going to stack and apply to multiple programs at once. Move to the next slide. So just to talk a little bit about these types of micro certificates and certificates. Basically, uh, the micro certificate is a smaller course. It is two courses, eight credits. Uh, they can typically be earned in a semester or two. It is competency-based. It's designed to help you build and demonstrate your mastery in a specific given area. And it's stackable with both related graduate certificates and ALM master's programs. The master's, the, pardon me, the graduate certificates are, are they're similar, but a little bit 
more um, content to them. They've got four courses, four four credit courses to complete a graduate certificate. They also help you build expertise in a specialized area to help advance your career. And they can be earned on your way to your graduate degree. The Stack Ultra certificates can be a really great option because courses can be used for multiple types of credentials at once. So you could use one course that would apply to a micro certificate, a graduate certificate, and your ALM degree simultaneously. There are some, there are some really great options for this. Um, data modeling and ethics micro certificate can be folded into the data analytics graduate certificate and the two courses for the micro are also applicable to the graduate certificate. And then the four courses for the graduate certificate can then be also used and applied toward your ALM if you were to do, for instance, a systems engineering ALM. And it makes a, it's a really great way to maximize your experience and your credentials here. And we can move to the next slide. So just to talk a little bit about our Earn Your Way In admission program, uh, we believe that we believe in earn your way in admissions because we want to meet you where you are now. We know life's complex. Test scores, previous grades, they aren't always a full picture of who you are and what you're capable of. We want to meet you where you are and give you what is going to help you you know, progress in your career and in your life. So you begin your path to admissions, completing the two designated courses for admission for your program. These courses enable you to showcase your ability and to showcase your ability to be successful in the program while preparing you for graduate level coursework. It's you're getting your feet wet, you're showing what you can do, and you're getting to know us as we get to know you. These courses are part of the program curriculum. They're going to count towards your 12 course degree once you're admitted. For example, computer science degree program, you'll take a course in data structures and another in programming languages. If you earn at least a B in each course, and this is for all programs, not just not just computer science, but if you earn at least a B in each of your admissions courses, you will be admitted to the program, and then you only have 10 more courses to complete. You've already got a chunk of your degree out of the way. <clears throat> be sure to visit the degree requirements page on the website and for your degree program of interest and to learn more about confirming that you've confirming your admission eligibility and uh, what to do to complete those admission courses. You can find out when they're offered and what's going to fit well with your life. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Bruce. Uh, thanks, Katie. Uh, so um, now this uh, slide here that you're seeing in front of you actually brings us to the highlight uh, of that master's degree program. The picture that you see there is actually uh, our pre-capstone or capstone students standing in front of Harvard Hall, right? That's where we have our pre-capstone uh, right there at Harvard Yard. The capstone project experience um, it isn't uh, another assignment, another project. It's the accumulation of your hard work and learning uh, is where theory meets practice and you, get to leave your mark on real world challenges and leave your footsteps at the Harvard Yard. Um, so now imagine that collaborating with industry leaders uh, and your peers, right? Bringing diverse perspectives and skills to the table. And that's exactly what our Capstone project is all about. Uh, you will harness your collective knowledge to solve problems uh, that matters in problems that are relevant uh, to today's world. Specifically uh, for our degree programs, there's a unique twist. You will come to our wonderful Harvard campus, right, for an immersive three weeks uh, summer session uh, or in January, the J-term session uh, for the pre-capstone course. And I have the pleasure uh, of uh, guiding our data science and cybersecurity students through this crucial stage, right? And uh, so, um, and, uh, and and the picture that you're seeing, basically those are the bright mice from 2023 cohort, right? And uh, so the purpose of this on-campus experience uh, is multifold. Uh, firstly, it helps to build a community, right? A network of ambitious, uh, like my individuals coming together. And secondly, it allows for an intensive focus on learning something that is a bit difficult to do 
uh, and a little difficult to replicate uh, online. And finally, it's about bridging the gap between knowledge and applications. You learn not just how to approach the problem, but also how to navigate the complexities of collaborative interdisciplinary work. And after you complete uh, the pre-capstone during the three-week sessions, and you step into the next semester and ready to dive into your capstone projects. And these projects are very and as dynamic uh, as the field itself, right? And uh, that uh, so um, you have the opportunities of working with uh, industry partners and thought leaders, um, and uh, that will add another layer of depth to your project. Right, and so this collaboration is a stepping stone. Many of our students uh, continue to find their capstone projects even after graduation, and some find the opportunities uh, with their um, sponsor uh, companies. And so the capstone project isn't just an academic experience; it's a launch pad into your career. It's a chance to make an impact, right, and a way to start building your professional legacy. Next. Right. So when you, when you, when you enroll with us uh, in the uh, program, you, you aren't just signing up for a top-notch education with a top-notch school. You are stepping into the world uh, brimming with opportunities and resources. And the best part, right, as a student here, as a matriculated degree student here, you have the same access of resources, right, as other Harvard matriculated students. It's about equity, equality, experiences, and opportunities. So our dedicated staff, uh, also your co-pilots on this education journey, whether you need academic guidance, career advice, or just listen a, a listening ear, uh, they are here for you. And believe me, right, their support is invaluable. They are the unsung heroes uh, who help make your dreams attainable. Uh, imagine having the keys to Harvard Innovation Lab, right, a playground for the curious uh, and ambitious. This is where ideas are nurtured where innovation uh, blossoms and where tomorrow's ventures take root. Uh, in a few moments, you will get a closer look uh, at the eye labs and through the eyes of our students who have lived that experience. But it is not just about the physical space, it's about the people uh, you will meet, right? And the Harvard Extension School is your ticket to a global community, to the Harvard community. From online interactions to in-person events, the connections you forge here will shape your future. These bonds often transcend time and distance. Uh, and then there are those hallmark moments like the convocations, the commencement held in the historical Harvard Yard. There's nothing quite like celebrating your achievements where so many great minds have walked. You will find and you will feel the weight Right, and uh, the wonder of centuries of academic excellence as you take those steps. But let me tell you, the true essence of this experience isn't just their prestige, it's the personal growth uh, you will encounter, the challenges you will overcome, and the sense of belonging to something greater than yourself. As a member of this Harvard community, your voice, your vision, and your verse, right, will find a home here. So on a personal level, seeing the diversity and passion within our student community has always been a highlight for me. The connections you make here, they are not just for the duration of your course, but they are here for life. So as you embark on this journey with Harvard Extension School, Remember that the benefit extend well beyond what you learn in the classroom or over Zoom. They are about who you become in the process, whether you like it or not, right? Whether you like it or not, you will become a Harvard graduate and you will be a Harvard alumni for life.
So with that, um, we um, let's look forward to uh, hearing from our students panel uh, in their first hand experiences in the iLab. Awesome, Bruce. Thank you so much for that comprehensive presentation of our programs. So now we'll transition into the main portion of this event today, our coffee chat. I would now like to introduce our students and alumni panel who will be joining us for our Q&A. First, Vivian, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, my name is Vivian. I am doing a degree in data science and I am going to graduate next year. Fantastic, thank you, Vivian. Up next, Frank. Hello, future Harvard students. I'm Frank Vanassis. I am a ALM degree candidate in systems engineering. It was formerly known as Information Management Systems, and I've transitioned to the new program. And I anticipate graduating in May 2025. And I also want to share, I recently completed the graduate certification in cybersecurity. So some of the things I'm really interested in and I think are amazing about Harvard Extension School is the flexibility and the variety of the courses. Our course catalog, you know, from the Division of Continuing Education is extensive. We have a huge variety of courses you can take towards your program requirements. For example, in my program, we have uh, a database management requirement. Well, you're not just confined taking one course, you have a multitude of courses to meet your needs. And some are more technical than others and some are more applied. And of course, the flexibility of taking evening courses, you know, be it on, uh, on demand or a live, live, uh, live webcam um, seminar course. So you can take them at your own pace to fit your busy schedule. And I can't underscore the importance of your classmates. Get to know your classmates. This is an incredible academic journey. You meet incredible, helpful, and humble people so you can build a global network. And that's, that's great for yourself and your personal advancement. And also don't be surprised in finding out that many of your classmates are seasoned executives and managers, and that's a plus for your network as well. So I look forward to answering any of your questions and hope to see you in some future classes. Thanks, Frank. That's a great point about these opportunities to connect um, both, on, both on a personal level and professional level, both in the class and outside the class. Next, I'll welcome Nikita. Nikita, if you could join us. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nikita Roy. I graduated earlier this year from my um, ALM and data science program. Um, Harvard Extension School has been a huge, basically a transformation in my career and completely changed um, the experience that I had in where I'm where the work I'm doing today. Um, the Harvard Innovation Labs has been a huge contributor to that um, innovation. Basically, the moment I joined Harvard, I had this entrepreneurial spirit and that was basically nurtured and transformed by the courses that I was taking, as well as being part of the Harvard Innovation Labs. And so um, I'm now doing my dream job, which is basically being a media tech entrepreneur. I host a podcast called Newsroom Robots, which explores the role of AI in journalism. And uh, my strong background in data science that I got from this program has really been able to me in the work that I'm doing right now in the news industry. And so I'm very excited to share the experience that I'm having uh, that I've had at the Harvard and uh, answer any questions you have today. Thanks so much, Nikita. Congratulations on uh, graduating and definitely going to have to check out your podcast. So thank you so much. And um, our last student panelist that I'll invite is Kisle. Kisle, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll jump into our coffee chat. Definitely. So I'm Kisle Kumar. I'm pursuing uh, ALM in data science, and I'm and on track to complete all the course requirement by end of this year, and will participate in Harvard commencement next year. Uh, based on my experience, I would like to emphasize uh, two key aspects of this program that I have personally felt. The first and foremost is the practical and uh, practical applicability of the uh, all the course content that is taught in this program. You'll be able to apply what you learn directly to your job if you are working in the same area. For me, it's the same area. I work in data science. I, I did my, uh, I'm, I'm doing my master's in data science. So I directly use whatever I learn. That is the first thing. Secondly, I think the uh, most important part of this program is the free capstone experience at Harvard campus. It offers you great opportunity to build essential connections. And I think networking is a vital part of the journey in this program. I have made many connections. And if I, I, I feel free to ask any questions later to all this. Thank you so much, Kisle, and, and thank you to our whole panel for your introductions. I would now like to invite everyone back, including Bruce and Katie, so we can start our coffee chat. 
And to kick us all off and in uh, on theme with our coffee chat here today, we could all raise our coffee mugs. If you can kind of see them to the camera. Awesome, and that will kick us off. So the first question for the panel is for Bruce. We've got a few questions from panelists in the chat about this. What does the typical path look like for a degree candidate and how long does it usually take? So basically that our program uh, that uh, normally consists of a total of 12 courses, uh, as Katie mentioned previously. And the students basically started with the two earn your way in pre-admission courses. Right, uh, and then they will basically continue and finish the ten courses, uh, and then finally that they will uh, get to the pre-capstone and capstone. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the time that uh, we allow students to complete the degree uh, on a part-time basis, right? I mean that's what Harvard Extension School is about: extending Harvard's education to professionals that who want to complete their degree in a part time on a part time basis. So you can complete it uh, within five years. We give you five years time frame. But we, we've seen that a lot of our students actually uh, basically that uh, completed in two and a half years and three years. Um, and uh, that uh, so throughout the journey and uh, we and the supporting staff will be uh, with you. Thank you so much, Bruce. And kind of on the same vein, uh, Katie, this next question is for you. Few people have been asking, what's the maximum number of courses you can take in one semester? And to kind of follow up with that, as an academic advisor, do you often have conversations about, you know, course load, maximum course load, how to balance your time with your students? What does that kind of look like, those conversations as an um, advisor? Absolutely. Yeah, that is a frequent com conversation that we have because as you know, a school for, for mostly adult learners, that's so relevant to people's lives, the flexibility. Um, our maximum enrollment is uh, during the fall and spring semesters, four courses, 16 credits. That is considered full time. Um, folks do that sometimes. Most of our folks do not take that that full course load, but it is permitted. Uh, summer and January term have slightly different rules because they are more intensive short courses. So that it's a little bit different in January, but for the spring and the fall, it's four courses, 16 credits. Um, I spend a lot of time working with my advisees about how to think about their schedule, how to think about <clears throat> how their course load is going to work with their lives. And, and, you know, we have a lot of guidance that we can help offer people about how to look at your schedule and how to think about your personal schedule and your work schedule. And we provide a number of tools for you to understand the course before you even enroll. We have course evaluations, evaluations you can access. We have syllabi. We, we can work with you and make sure that we can help you fit this program into your life in a way that's gonna really work for you and you know help you be successful. Awesome, thank you, Katie. And I hear from so many of our students that you know they graduate with the help of our all of our resources or academic advisors, they have a, a community guiding them to graduation and even after. So it's great to hear that, you know, these conversations are happening early, they're happening frequently, and our, our students are leaning on, you know, these resources for support. So so thank you for that. Um, the next question is for a few of our students. What would you say the value of doing a capstone project has been for you in culminating, you know, your Harvard Extension School experience? I will start off um, with Vivian. Vivian, if you could tell us a little bit about um, your capstone, what the topic is, um, and how it's kind of helped you bridge theory, practice, and everything you've learned in the program so far. Sure. We are having a fantastic capstone experience. Our sponsor for the capstone is NASA, and uh, we are using satellite images to predict phytoplankton levels. Phytoplanktons are practicals in the ocean that help produce oxygen. And I am saying that our, we have a fantastic experience because NASA invited us on several occasions to the Goddard Space Flight Center, and they gave us a behind the scene tour, and we got to see a satellite that is going to launch, to be launched to the orbit in January next year. We were also invited to the launch itself, and we are invited back to NASA to present the uh, the findings of our capstone. So it was mind blowing for all of us. Uh, and I think what further opportunities are there is that some of the students are trying to get an internship or a full-time job at NASA. And I think it is going to happen. So I'm very proud of the team. Thank you, Vivian. That is truly inspiring. I am jealous myself. Might have to sign up right now just to <laughs> 
get some access to NASA. Um, awesome. Kisley, could you tell us a little bit about your um, experience with your capstone um, and maybe a little bit about your pre-capstone course on campus you were telling us about? Yeah, definitely. So uh, starting with the pre-capstone, uh, so as I was telling that uh, we were able to meet, like I, as uh, it was more than 40 folks were there and all were kind of expert in their own area and all. So you will get totally different perspective uh, from different, and it's kind of, it's a different kind of learning moment. And as, as part of that, you will build the connections as well. That's what I made. I made many connections that will be kind of, kind of lifelong. And coming to the uh, capstone part, so we are doing very interesting uh, classification task. Uh, it is very tough and it is very interesting as well. So uh, as uh, one of the slide has like Lyme disease classification, right? So we are working with one of the university from in Canada and we're trying to use social media data uh, to classify the Lyme disease sentiments. So you have to just classify whether it is people are talking about Lyme disease, whether they're just talking or whether someone is diagnosed with Lyme disease or it is just uh, nothing related to Lyme disease. So we are gathering data from uh, like social media, Reddit and Twitter, and we are using large language model. That is kind of talk of the town you would have heard, like chat GPT and all. So we are using similar technology here, uh, like open source technology, to just try to classify uh, the text. And that has been very interesting uh, in technology wise, as well as uh, how people suffer from Lyme. That is kind of, uh, it's eye opening for us now. <laughs> This whole experience is totally different. I'm not from the medical background, but now I got to know about uh, this whole line, how it, it works and all. So it's great experience that I'm totally from the engineering background. Now I am get I got to know about the medical uh, medical uh, issues like lines and all, and that is going to be uh, like we are solving like AI for good. We are using AI for good, so that's our capstone. That's super interesting. Thank you, Kisley. It sounds like you found a topic that you're very passionate about in your learning about you know both through the lens of the theory you've learned in class but also through this pragmatic hands-on education offered at extension so thank you for that and Nikita congratulations again on graduating um I'd love to hear a little bit about how your capstone project helped prepare you for the career you now have um and then on top of that kind of how Harvard Extension School in general helped you for your career and your current role yeah, so actually my capstone, um, I have to give a shout out to Bruce because he really pushed me to innovate uh, during the capstone project. We have the option to either go with one of the sponsored projects like NASA and like the University from Canada, McGill University, or we had the option to also come up with our own idea. And I think our cohort was very entrepreneurial minded and they all, a lot of innovation was happening and people wanted to have their own projects and ideas. Um, and I had a journalism startup at the time and uh, Bruce actually was like, aren't you gonna do anything for journalism? And I was like, wait a second, I should probably think about that. Um, and I had my journalism uh, one side and my data science AI bubble in another. And because of that, I was able to bring the two worlds together. Um, and we built out a recommendation system for local news um, platforms to make it personalized news experience um, for on local news platforms. And that's actually what kind of led to where I am today. Uh, if probably Bruce hadn't pushed me to innovate at that time, I would have kept my two like data science and journalism uh, bubbles as two separate things. But as a result of that, um, Newsroom Robots, which is the podcast I'm doing right now, uh, came about because I had this curiosity on how people are using AI in journalism. Um, and then now I do a lot of consultancy as well as a result of uh, the work that I was able to do as part of the capstone. So I think, um, it's been such a great experience as everyone's been saying like that community that you develop at that time um it was kind of like you we had to pitch as well um to our cohort uh to get our uh, teammates to uh, buy into the idea and so that was another experience it was like going and pitching in front of your teammates you're talking about your idea and then going around and rallying people because you had to get four people on your team as well so it was like a really like team building experience an opportunity for you to show your leadership skills and develop that as well um and yeah i so that's why i would say the capstone is the reason i'm actually doing the work that i am doing today and um it's very exciting uh to had have had that experience thank you nikita that is super powerful and it's great to hear that you know our community is not only there to support you class to class but also support you in pursuing your passions even if you know maybe there hasn't always been a path carved out ahead of you so i think 
um, you're really highlighting some of the great benefits of our community here. And so we've gotten a couple questions in the chat about opportunities to learn and connect outside of the classroom. Frank, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about some of um, the op some of the projects you've done outside the classroom, ways you've connected with students um, during your time here at Harvard Extension School. Absolutely. So one of the best ways to, to meet folks is actually coming to the convocation uh, ceremony that's that takes place on campus, typically in the fall. It's a great way just to, to meet faculty as well and students. And of course, um, during your academic pursuits, you'll have like group group work, discussions, and that sort of thing. So you'll be able to collaborate outside of the class as well. Um, and another thing that I do, and I, I take it upon myself to just message people during a Zoom lecture saying, you know, how's everything going? How are you enjoying the course? And just taking an interest in your classmates goes a long way. Connect on LinkedIn, have those continuing dialogues and discussions outside of the class is, is phenomenal. And I can't underscore the importance of building that network. So yeah, so, and, and also introduce yourself to your, um, your lecturers, your professors, let them know, you know, what you want out of this course, why are you taking it? And, and that helps them design the, the curriculum as well. And, and of course, syllabus to make it more relevant. So yeah, there's just so many ways you can, you know, be a part of this community and uh, yeah, so it's very exciting. Thanks so much, Frank. Kisley, I was wondering if you could also share a bit about some of the um, experiences that you've partaken in outside of the classroom, ways you've been able to connect with your community, um, despite the fact that some of our classes are online, how you've been able to, to do that? So, uh, uh, so as the whole course content is online, right? Uh, so it, it was like my whole journey started from the COVID time. Everything was kind of online at that time. Uh, we used to have all the courses online, everyone. And for uh, Harvard Extension, anyway, it is kind of online. So at that time, I made uh, like good connections. And from the very first initial course, if you have good, it's kind of just not connection, it's kind of friends. And I have continued uh, my journey, my whole ALM journey with them. So we used to choose the right courses. We used to discuss even choosing courses, which is right for us. And we used to just go through all those online resources available from Harvard to identify which, chooses, which course is uh, good for me, good for us. And by that way, it was kind of good uh, collaboration, uh, even actually choosing the uh, courses. And then we worked together and it has been kind of really great, great uh, journey till now. And I made like lifelong friends now. <laughs> they're not just my course mates, they're my friends. Awesome, thank you so much for that. And it's it's great to hear that you went from classmates to friends and friends that will probably stay in contact after graduation. So that's great to hear and very inspirational, Kisley, thank you. We've got, we're getting a couple questions in the chat about research um, opportunities while pursuing your degree. Um, and so Vivian, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about your experience with the Harvard Innovation Labs, um, which is one of the opportunities Harvard Extension School students have access to while they're pursuing their degrees here. Right, so I am building a startup, leveraging the data science skills I, le I learned during my uh, master's degree. And Harvard Innovation Labs is actually um, a building and an organization on campus that helps students build their startups. And I got phenomenal opportunities because of them, as well as I won several awards, such as a non-dilutive Harvard grant to test the market. I got to pitch on a Shark Tank for a Harvard show where I got to meet Kevin O'Leary. My startup was selected as the top four startups of Harvard University, and I got to pitch in front of a thousand people in Claremont Hall uh, on Harvard Business School, and I got to travel to Dallas and San Francisco on several startup conferences. So I am very thankful. It is a fun fantastic uh, opportunity, and it's not only on campus, but there are also online events. So I would recommend it for everyone who is interested in entrepreneurship. Thank you, Vivian. And Nikita, um, could you also tell us a little, about your, a little bit about your experience working with the Harvard Innovation Labs? Yeah, all the work I'm doing today is because actually of the Harvard Innovation Labs. Um, as soon as I had gotten in, uh, this was back in 2020, you had the opportunity to apply with an idea. And that's what I did. And they straight away give you um, like a grant that you can apply for. And it's just that you have all of these access to experts and these resources that absolutely blew me away. Whatever question I wanted, it was legal, accounting, um, just 
people who have built multi-million dollar companies sold them we see uh like venture funds uh everybody was there and like you had these one-on-one -on -one support and guidance uh, for you through harvard innovation labs and so i went out with my first venture which was the digital news startup and then now with my ai consultancy and with my podcast as well and even after you graduate they have another program for one year that you can be a part of um and you can apply to so there is continuing uh resources um harvard innovation labs has definitely been one of the biggest um, resources that I took advantage of. Um, I was there quite a lot. I spent a lot of time on campus as well, um, being there and just um, meeting people, the founder community. It's very entrepreneurial. And the best part about it was that I was able to take all of these courses and apply them directly to my startup. And all my professors knew about the startup and were so encouraging um, and had, gave me a lot of time to help guide me on how I should be building my startup. So um, that's been one of the best parts about being part of it was also that access to the Harvard Innovation Labs um, that I think has really transformed my career. Thank you, Nikita. And it sounds like, you know, for you and Vivian, marrying what you were learning in your courses with the pragmatic ability to implement that in Harvard Innovation Labs was really transformative for you. Very powerful. Bruce, we have one question kind of going back to the beginning. A few people have been asking, do people need to have a technology background to start a technology master's degree here at Harvard Extension School? Yeah, you don't really have to have a technology background, right? And uh, that, uh, so um, the five different fields of study that we have and uh, that we have students come from all walks of life, uh, that uh, they, uh, so we have people that are students that uh, who wanted to upskill uh, and uh, they are in the, in the career, in the field, and they want to upskill to the latest technologies. But we also have students that wanted to get into the field, right? And uh, so we have students from uh, you know, a management background. We have the students from a videography background. And uh, we have uh, students uh, from um, the uh, consulting and uh, management consulting and et cetera. And so uh, the, 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 the way that uh, Harvard Extension School work uh, is that we have the earn your way in pre-admission courses and those are, uh, are the introductory courses, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but besides that, uh, we also have a number of courses and some of them are open courses uh, as uh, to, for you to fulfill the prerequisite uh, requirements. Uh, that uh, so like for example, uh, everyone knows David Mallon and uh, that the celebrity uh, at Harvard uh, uh, professor uh, that uh, David Mallon teaches CS50, right? And uh, that so uh, that that is not part of the curriculum for the degree program, but it's a prerequisite. And uh, so uh, so we have a lot of the prerequisites uh, courses that we offer for you to fulfill uh, those uh, requirements uh, if you do not have a technology background to start with. Thank you, Bruce. That was a great answer to that question. And now we're going to have our last question for the panel, which is, why should someone join the Harvard Extension School technology community? Um, if you could give us a brief explanation of why, if you could do it again, you would, and the, the key benefits that, you know, keep you coming back each semester. Frank, we could start off with you. Sure, yeah, this, that's a great question. I definitely don't regret uh, starting my academic uh, pursuit at uh, HES. It's just been an incredible journey. It opened so many doors. Um, I was able to pivot into the cybersecurity field um, even prior to completing my uh, graduate certificate in cybersecurity. It just gave me the confidence to interview and you know, really show employers that you know, I can handle personal life and academic pursuits at the same time. That, that speaks a lot to you. So if you're sitting on the fence, you can do it. Uh, believe in yourself. Um, the courses are interesting. They're not so overly demanding. Well, you, you won't be able to have a social life or anything like that and, and um, meet your family obligations. So I, I can tell you that, yeah, it's well worth the investment, the financial commitment, the time commitment. You, you won't regret it. Definitely not. Thank you, Frank. Next up, um, Vivian, could you tell us a little bit about why you would do this again? Sure. One of the most important things for me was the flexibility that we could do it online uh, because of I used to be a consultant prior to being an entrepreneur. And because of that, I was traveling all the time. Thus, being able to take the classes online was extremely helpful. That was the key thing for me. 
Thank you. I love that that note about flexibility. That is our is core to our mission here at Extension. Kisle, how about you? Yeah, so I so I have a good amount of experience in this area, right? So I just go with whatever helps me. And I found that Harvard provides you a lot of options, a lot of course options are there. And you can choose what is going to help you in your career. So that is the best part I have felt. And I, I feel that after that I will graduate, still I will be, I'll be keeping keep on doing this, some of the courses after my graduation because I know what is needed for me, what is needed for my career growth and all. I can come and choose whatever course is applicable and practical aspect of all those courses. There are two items. Thank you, Kisle. Nikita? Yeah, for me, it's the access to a world-class education and resources. And I think just the power of being part of the Harvard ecosystem is something that you cannot really underscore. Um, it opens up a lot of doors. Um, and if you are even like, if you just have like an entrepreneurial spirit as well, there are just so many resources there to support and guide you and the flexibility and the support ecosystem that you can develop is really unmatched. Thanks, Nikita. And, and Katie, what would you say is one of the highlights for you of working with our technology students? Um, I, I love working with the technology students. They are one of my absolute favorite groups. They are so interesting. They are driven. They come in with great ideas and big plans. And, you know, it's, it's so gratifying to help them connect with the resources to make those plans a reality. It's, it's, they're, they're one of my favorite groups. I love IT. Thanks, Katie. And Bruce, lastly with you, what is so powerful about the technology programs here at Harvard Extension School? Well, it, being in technology is, is wonderful, right? And uh, that uh, this is probably the most exciting field uh, because of the dynamic and ever evolving, right? And uh, that technologies change and is so fast. If you think about like uh, a year and a half ago, uh, no one's talk about uh, ChatGPT, but now everyone talk about ChatGPT, right? And uh, the, not just us, the technologists, but everyone in the world is talking about ChatGPT. So I started my career uh, at IBM as a data analyst, and uh, that and the tool that they gave me was a stopwatch to to take measurement, right? And uh, so you see that how things change and uh, so quickly and so fast and. Um, uh, in, in order for us and uh, to uh, basically that stay uh, upright and uh, to stay current uh, with the trend. Uh, so basically what we have done is that we created uh, a, an awesome advisory board uh, for our degree program. And our advisory boards are basically that consists of some very top senior doll leaders uh, in the field. Uh, whether it is data science or cybersecurity or digital media design system engineering or computer science. And so they consist of the Harvard faculty uh, at the School of Engineering, and they consist of the thought leaders and uh, in the field, and many of them are hiring manager as well. And uh, so that's basically help us to keep ourselves current and uh, that uh, our goal, our mission here uh, at Harvard uh, is basically that not just ensuring that the students uh, will get an a, a excellent uh, education, but at the same time, the relevancy, right? And the relevant skills uh, that they can actually practice and to enrich and to enhance their career. And so that's what makes our program so powerful. Thank you so much, Bruce. And thank you to you all for your insightful answers and to all of our attendees today for the questions you've been asking of everyone. If you weren't able to get your question uh, answered during our session or more arise, please contact us at inquiry at extension.harvard.edu or call us at 617-998-8500. Make sure to also follow us on social media to stay updated on deadlines, hear student testimonials, and learn more about our offerings. We want to remind you of a few key, key dates for January and spring sessions. So December 7th is the full payment deadline for January session. January 4th is the full payment deadline for spring term. January 2nd is the last day to register for courses for January session. And January 18th is the last day to register for courses for spring term. Lastly, as a few of you have been asking, we will be sending out this recording today to the email you use to register, and you'll also be able to access it on the event page and our Harvard Extension School YouTube channel. Thank you all so much again for joining us today, and we hope to see you in class this spring.